Hello, everybody. Welcome to our webinar today. My name is Missy Carvin. And I'm Beth Slazak. Uh, and we want to welcome you to the Creative Education Foundation's webinar series, Creativity Connections. Today, we're taking a look at virtual team building, transitioning to remote teams that function well. This was a suggestion we got from viewer Tim Lynch last week. Um, the purpose of this webinar series is to use some creative solutions to empower us. Uh, these are new times that call for different ways of working, and we want to help you use deliberate creativity to connect in new ways with your coworkers and teams in particular. Um, so what I'd love is for everybody who's on right now, take just a second and down in the chat box down at the uh, bottom of your screen, go ahead and type in um, your answer to the question, what might be all the ways that you can connect with other people this week? Uh, so find that chat box, type in what might be all the ways that you can connect with other people this week. So we know humans are naturally social creatures. Even the most introverted person needs to connect with other people. That's why we see work husbands or office spouses. And while the vast majority of us are at home with our families all day right now, we aren't able to interact with our office families in the ways to which we've grown accustomed. For many of us, we are working literally in uncharted territory. If you aren't part of the regular work from home demographic, this is very new and may need adjustment in how you do things. Our organization has always been a distance team, so we'd like to share some creative tips and tools that we use and give you some activities to help build up your team deliberately during this time. So let's think about some spaces where people connect at the office. There are some typical spaces, both physical and met metaphorical, that we might be trying to recreate when we work virtually. In other words, at our desk or our kitchen table at home. So there are three places we thought of that we connect at work. The first is the conference room. Uh, this is for scheduled meetings that have an agenda and a purpose hopefully, um, the water cooler or coffee maker or lunchroom for socializing and catching up on personal news. And then there are the desk drive-bys, um, those minutes where you check in with your coworkers on work-related tasks and projects. So here are some tools that we can use to help recreate those spaces while we're working virtually. So our conference room right now, virtual meetings. Uh, there's so many platforms now that are we're all using GoToMeeting, Zoom, Google Hangouts. The CEF team uses GoToMeetings for a standard Tuesday morning call. We always use our webcam so that we're face-to-face -face no matter where we are. We start by sharing our weekly self-assessments so we can do a check-in and also share what we're working on in the event another team member could be helpful with it. The key is regular meetings on camera to keep up that human connection. So the next space is the water cooler, the coffee maker, the lunchroom. Um, and really what this has been taken over by uh, that we're seeing is group chats. So that might be Slack or a group text, something like that. Um, my husband's work team has a Slack chat that's just for their team, as well as a bigger one for the whole department. And the smaller team Slack often works as the water cooler. They have work-related requests and conversation, but they've also got jokes and GIFs and memes and just kind of general chat. How are your kids? What's going on in your in your world? Um, our CEF team has a group text thread that's got both work and personal content, so we're able to check in frequently with one another. Uh, right now, we're all on bread watch because our office manager Jamie is trying some new yeast for her bread, and we're all waiting to see if it blows the roof off her house. The last kind of connection are those desk drive-bys. So what we'd see virtually is timed check-ins. So maybe it is with text or Slack. Every morning when we first wake up, the CEF, temp, te the CEF team sends a group text listing the most important things that we have to get done that day. So the uh, most th important thing for work, the most important thing for ourselves, and then the most important thing for our family. Um, you can send out a proposal, call mom, meditate, whatever it is, those three things. My husband has a standing call with a supervisor every morning and they share what the needs of the day are gonna be. 
Another type of desk drive-by are video calls, FaceTime, Google Duo, etc. Missy and I are on FaceTime all of the time. We set up our work sessions so that we are working simultaneously through video and also on Google Docs. So we might as well be next to each other, even though we're on opposite sides of the country. Uh, and the last one is co-working software. Google Docs is great. Microsoft Teams is good. Asana, et cetera. Any of those, having shared interface is super helpful for working in real time on specific projects. Uh, if you want to take a moment to go to the chat box right now and share with everybody else what tools that your team is using. So while you're thinking about that, um, we know that there are definitely new considerations uh, for when you're working virtually. It's kind of expected that there's going to be um, kids or pets in the house. Um, they might be in the frame, they might be in the background, um, especially on conference calls or, or video calls. There's often a time lag because work is being done asynchronously. Um, I might be a morning person and someone I'm working with might be better off at, you know, eight or nine at night. Um, so there's a little bit of a lag between when I get them something and when they get it back to me. Um, knowing that everybody is experiencing the same thing can be a great basis for building teamwork through empathy. So what we want to share with you right now are some creative problem solving tips and tricks to rethink things that might help as your team navigates this new way of thinking. The first one that we do all of the time in any kind of creative mindset activity is phrasing new challenges as questions and determining criteria. So for example, dress codes, we're hearing a lot about on social media. Instead of saying, I don't know what to wear to work at my desk, you can reframe the challenge into what might be the basic dress requirements for getting work done? <laughs> Pants, shoes, bras, uh, figure out what what are your bases that, that have to be covered. One of the first dress codes that Facebook had was you had to wear pants, which I think is amusing. Um, in Missy's market research consultancy, consultancy, the dress code was that you couldn't come to work in pajamas. Knowing what's expected and appropriate can help set aside work time from non-work time when everything seems so the same. So speaking of things being different, you got to plan for divergent thinking. Um, that might be through regular check-in times and activities. When is your team going to huddle? Is it at the beginning, the middle, the end of the day? How are you going to check in? Is that group chat? Are you just going to post to each other on Facebook? And then what's good to be shared um, in that medium and what should be shared via something else like email or a phone call? So as our schedules get weird, plan for incubation time through scheduled breaks. Make sure that you're taking a lunch. You can even go out to lunch or maybe meet for a cocktail with coworkers. We've seen a lot of these Zoom parties lately and they're a lot of fun. Remember to meet each other as people, not just coworkers. All right, plan for implementation by knowing when work is likely to get done. What are your office hours? When are you going to be at your desk or available for work-related issues? When are you closed for the day? When are you allowed to go dark, either to concentrate on a task or project to be done, or you know, just taking a break? Taking time off is really critical for patients and mental health. And in turn, patients and a good outlook are important to allow space to be kind to our coworkers. Also, if you're in a, I can work 24 hour a day industry, check to make sure that the work that you're doing is valuable and not burning you out. Um, taking those breaks uh, really does up the implementation factor because you're not uh, burning yourself completely out. And finally, use praise first and assume positive intent. This might be the hardest. Be mindful of HR rules. What is appropriate to share? And concentrate on using healing humor. Humor is a great tool to be using right now, but if you have to say, can't you tell a joke? Then you haven't told one. Use 
the coffee mug rule. If you can find the humor, if it's appropriate to share on a coffee mug, then it's probably appropriate in the office. Most things printed there are completely acceptable. Keep kindness and caring at the front of your actions. We are all doing things different and we're all figuring this out as we go along. Try to show, show compassion and empathy for your coworkers and assume what they're doing is for the best. At SIPSI, our conference that we run, our logistical volunteers, who are known as WINGS, have a few key rules that we follow. And rule number four is be nice to WINGS. When you're working at an event, it's a stressful time. You're running around all of the time. It's 24 hours seven days a week type job. And it's easy to snap at the person next to you. So we are very mindful of that's the last person that you should snap at. And in this time of stress, keep in mind that those coworkers that you have, those are the last people that you should snap at also. Be extra vigilant in your care and concern and your monitoring of your behavior towards these people. So we're going to recommend a fun activity that you can do on your next team video call uh, to build some human connections. It's and uh, and uh, by the way, I want to tell you I'm seeing all of the um, answers coming in. We'll share those at the end for different um, ways that people are suggesting that they connect with folks. Um, so whatever platform you use, this is just a really fun game. Um, it's an applied improvisation game called Story Spine. Um, and I will tell you as a parent, as a bonus, you can definitely do this uh, with your kids too. So here's how Story Spine works. Um, you take turns filling in the short story using the template uh, that we have. And if you would like a copy of this, uh, if you go to, um, there should be a handouts section uh, and if you don't have that somebody pop that in the questions and I'll make sure to get that in there but we will um, make sure that you get a PDF of this so you have it um, so the the structure is this you start with once upon a time and that's where we meet somebody we give them a name and maybe a characteristic which might be fancy Nancy or Melanie the dog walker we establish a routine and every day so they go to the store every day they always make their bed whatever until one day we have a dramatic change a dragon appears or they find out they're a wizard or all the light bulbs are burned out and because of that uh, and things happen and you can do as many of these because of that as you need we usually do between three and five but if you have six kids or seven co-workers you're more than welcome to let each of them do their own until finally we see a culmination of events the house blows down the monster runs away uh, and ever since then we want to know what's changed because of this event. There's no more purple jelly beans. Bedtimes are at two o'clock in the afternoon. We walk on the way and walk on the walkway and park on the parkway. Um, and then the moral of the story is this is any kind of message that can be gleaned from the story. So it might be chocolate always helps, or dogs should never babysit, or never answer the door with wet hair, etc. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and demo this for you. So. Once upon a time, there was a small reindeer named Rigoletto. And every day, Rigoletto climbed to the top of the mountainside and sang those beautiful operatic arias. Until one day, a huge blizzard blew in, blocking his path up the hill. And because of that, he was forced to find a new place to sing. And because of that, he found that there was a village down around on the other side. Because of that, he found out that one of the people living in the village had a herd of reindeer. Until finally, he went to live with that herd and was no longer alone. And ever since then, he taught the rest of the reindeer how to sing opera with him. So he always had a backup chorus. And the moral of the story is, choirs are better than soloists. We did totally just make that up, in case you couldn't <laughs> tell. <laughs> so why does this help? One, when you're doing something like this, you have to listen. And you need to listen to what the person before you has said. The rhythm is destroyed if you are not paying attention. Same thing happens at meetings. If you are out thinking 
critical information can be shared and missed, and it makes it harder for your team to get through what needs to be done. Uh, another thing is it's easier when you add details and contribute to what's going on. So from the story, little things like the mountain gives us a visual for it. Successful teams at work build on each other's uh, ideas and actions with little details. Actions at play mimic actions at work. So this is a great way to practice helping each other towards a common goal. The next thing is take risks. This is a fun place to do that because the, the outcome is completely free. Uh, so when you're doing this kind of activity, improv rules reply, whatever you've done, that's right. This is a great safe space to work on inventing as we go along, which is where we are right now, deeply in the making it up as we go along. Everything is new. So here's a chance to try it in a safer place. So um, speaking of trying some things, a couple things that came up in our chat uh, from what are ways that you connect with people um, or what ways are you using right now? We've seen a lot of things that are Slack or Google Drive or Zoom, um, enterprise social networking, sort of like Facebook, but inside um, enterprise, um, different than Slack. Um, my a couple of the more creative ones include smoke signals and yelling from really far away. So, um, you know, do what you need to do uh, to make sure that you're you're connecting creatively with people. So a couple of key takeaways from today. Uh, remember that all of these behaviors, whether it's starting a video call or planning a, a group chat um, or playing an improv game, all of these creative behaviors support a creative mindset. When you can approach new and novel uh, experiences, such as what we're all living through right now with a creative mindset, you're more likely to make it through there uh, with your creativity and your good, good sense of humor intact. Um, remember that your team is a team. You were a team before, you're a team now. Find ways that you can all pull together and show compassion. Remember that small measures create big effects. So don't be concerned with changing the whole world all at once. Uh, implement one thing and then another thing and then another thing. Um, and we'd love for you to show us your team on Facebook, whether that's um, an image of your next uh, video call or um, you, know, you and your dog, if that's your team right now. Um, we wanna see that. Go to the uh, Creative Education Foundation Facebook page and hashtag your picture with creativity connections. Um, so when you go on Facebook, uh, please leave us a suggestion for what's one thing that you want to do to be a better virtual teammate this week. Um, so with that, I think I might have lost Beth. Her internet has been a little bit weird today. Uh, we wanna thank the Creative Education Foundation community. Um, special thanks again to Tim Lynch um, for the topic idea. We do love your feedback, so keep it coming. And don't forget to keep connecting creatively. Thanks everybody for coming today. We'll have another one of these next week.